Coming up on Dare to Love, why millions of Muslims worldwide unite in fasting during the month of Ramadan, and how you can use that time to reach out to your Muslim neighbor with the love of Christ. Samia's guest is a physician who will talk about the physical and emotional effects of fasting, and Samia answers your questions about Islam. All this and more is coming up right now. Here's Samia. Hi, I'm Samia Johnson. Welcome to this new episode of Dare to Love. In the next half hour, we will unveil one of Islam's five pillars, fasting during Ramadan. Have you ever fasted? If so, why did you fast? We took this question to the public to hear what they have to say. No. I tried to. I've told myself that I wanted to fast, but I haven't. I mean, I, I, I guess I fasted sometimes. Maybe I might go without food for two days. Um, because I was focused on something, you know, I wanted to get my relationship closer with God. I wanted to stay focused on whatever I was doing. It was something maybe that was coming up that I really wanted. Um, different reasons, but you know, I have fasted before, so. Um, no. Uh, well, to seek God, you know, uh, to seek His will in my life sometime. So not all people fast, and those who do fast for various reasons. For Muslims, fasting is a practice they must observe in the hope of becoming virtuous. If you ask a Muslim, why do you fast? He will answer, because Allah has commanded us to do so. And that's true. Fasting during Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam. So starting at puberty, fasting is a must for every Muslim. There are rules for those who break the fast or are unable to fast. If the Muslim is temporarily sick or has a condition that is resolved later, such as with the flu or pregnancy, one should make up each day missed of Ramadan with another day of fasting later, a day for a day. One should try to make up these days as soon as it's possible for fasting to resume, and definitely before the beginning of next year's Ramadan. Now, if the Muslim has a chronic health condition that is not expected to be resolved, one should give enough charity to feed one person for each day of the fasting month. If the Muslim deliberately breaks the fast or misses a day of fasting for no legitimate reason, it's also necessary to make up the missed day later. In the case when someone breaks the fast by engaging in sexual activity, one must observe a penalty fasting 60 continuous days or feeding 60 poor people. It's worth noting here that even Muslims who don't want to observe Ramadan eat in secret so they won't be persecuted by other Muslims. Muslims and Christians can be beaten on the street if they are seen chewing or on something or drinking water. Now, what are the rewards of fasting? One reward is found in a hadith where Muhammad promised Muslims the following. Whoever established prayers on the night of Qadr out of sincere faith and hoping for a reward from Allah, then all his previous sins will be forgiven. And whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan out of sincere faith and hoping for a reward from Allah, then all his previous sins will be forgiven. So observing Ramadan forgives all previous sins and Muslims can start over with a clean slate. Therefore, religious practices in Islam, such as prayers and fasting, wipe out sins. But do they wipe out all sins and confirm eternal salvation? Certainly not. For me, this is discouraging because no matter how much good a person might do, there is no way he or she can earn God's acceptance. He is holy and we are not. He is just, therefore my sin must be punished. That's why I put all my trust in Jesus Christ who paid the wages of my sin so that God's justice and mercy can meet. Don't go anywhere. Sammy will be right back after this short break. Why do Muslim women cover their heads? Do all Muslims really have to pray in Arabic, even if they don't speak Arabic? The more you look into Islam, the more questions you'll likely have. 
Get all of your questions answered by Samya right here on Dare to Love. Just email your questions to ask at daretolove.tv. Ask at daretolove.tv. The Simple Truth, the Quran and the Bible side by side is a great resource from Call of Love Ministries, written by Dare to Love TV program host, Samya Johnson. The Simple Truth is a valuable, quick reference that was written with high school and college students in mind. This 60-page booklet is full of quick bullet points, comparing topics like sin, paradise, and martyrdom as they are referenced in the Quran and the Bible. If you want to know what Islam is and what it is not, you'll find your answers in The Simple Truth. Purchase your copy today for $10 or place a bulk order at a discounted rate of $5 per book. Give as gifts to friends, college students, or provide for youth groups, youth organizations, or churches passionate to learn the facts about Islam and Christianity. To order online, go to our website, daretolove.tv, daretolove.tv. Let's talk now about how Muslims fast. This may be very different from any fast you might have done or heard of. First, Muslims must fast from sunrise to sunset. In summer, the days are longer, so that means they fast sometimes 14 hours or more. Muslims not only abstain from any food or drink, the list goes on and on. Smoking, alcohol, marital relationships, chewing gum, brushing your teeth, even taking medication. And the more devout Muslims will not even swallow their own saliva. Muslims also abstain from lying during Ramadan as well as from fighting, except to protect themselves. And women should not use makeup or perfume. Now, what is the effect of fasting on our bodies and minds? That's what I discussed with Dr. Snyder, a successful surgeon who is a witness to the risen Christ wherever he travels. Let's watch my interview with him and later we will continue exploring Ramadan. I'm glad to have you uh, on our show, Dr. Snyder. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here, Sam. Muslims fast for 30 days during Ramadan, every day, mm -hmm. all day mm -hmm. during the daylight, mm -hmm. with no water and uh, nothing to put in their mouths. And I want to know from you as a physician, what's mm -hmm. the effect of fasting on our bodies and our minds? Well, fasting is, is a uh, somewhat highly debated topic, at least in the United States. Mm -hmm. It is uh, regarded by some as extremely healthy and by many as extremely harmful. Uh, I've uh, looked at this very carefully as a physician because I have people all the time who ask me about it and mm -hmm. need some guidance. Uh, fasting, particularly brief fasts, are probably good for you. Uh, they help to uh, get in balance your metabolism a little better. You mm -hmm. know, We tend to eat in very unhealthy ways and fasting can trigger a pattern of eating that is more intentional and careful. And when you do that, it can reduce the stress on your insulin, your pancreas, other systems in your body. It can help to cleanse a little bit. What it does not do, though, is detoxify the body. There's a big claim out there that when you fast, you remove all the toxins, and that's mm -hmm. just not true at all. Uh, but it can be healthy if done properly. But uh, it's very important to hydrate, to drink water, even during brief fasts. Mm -hmm. And there are people who have certain conditions who mm -hmm. should probably never fast. Yes. People who are, women who are pregnant, people with diabetes, people who are taking lots of Tylenol, for example, mm -hmm. or other medications should not fast mm -hmm. and not dehydrate because that can cause concentrations of these things in your livers and kidneys and hurt you quite mm -hmm. badly. But what about uh, the effect of us uh, spiritually and what does it do to our minds or sure. to our uh, spiritual condition? It probably doesn't do anything directly to the mind over mm -hmm. brief periods of time and the reason for that is that we are fearfully and wonderfully made mm. as people by God. Our Creator God knew how to make us protect our brain and vital organs uh, with special protections and special levels of blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a super severe fast and dehydration to do anything 
harmful to our minds. Mm. Okay. I think though that there is some evidence that uh, brief fasts and intentional periods where you combine fasting with deep thought and prayer especially, mm -hmm. where you are able to focus better. And uh, during these times, when there are very important needs in your life, mm -hmm. or there are uh, important challenges, mm -hmm. when there needs to be a lot of guidance from God and benefit from reading scripture, mm -hmm. the combination of fasting, the combination of uh, deep thought and prayer, I think comes into clear focus, and mm -hmm. there's where fasting can be helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want our listeners to know why do Christians fast? Is sure. it uh, a commandment, we have to fast at certain times, or what is the reason behind fasting? Well, the, the spiritual benefits of it, or the spiritual background, I think, to mm -hmm. fasting is very rich. In the Old Testament, there are over 30 examples, specific examples in Scripture of where fasting was described. There's one place having to do with the Day of Atonement where mm -hmm. it's actually uh, demanded. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only place, though. Mm -hmm. uh, in the other places, uh, fasting uh, really was used by great men and women mm -hmm. of the Bible to accomplish great things or to help them. Uh, Moses, for example, fasted for 40 days continuously over the sin of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. uh, David fasted a very long time, I think seven days. For me, that would be very long. Yes. Uh, to help his people focus on the suffering that they experienced when Saul and Jonathan died. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, there's actually more teaching by Jesus on fasting than many other topics. Yes. Uh, he spoke about it in the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, there are times when, uh, you know, Jesus himself fasted for 40 days mm -hmm. in the wilderness to both, uh, you know, com commune with the Father more intensely, to prepare himself for the temptations, to not only just prepare for them, but to be completely victorious mm. in those temptations, mm -hmm. uh, to endure what the Lord wanted him to endure both then and probably in some foretelling way, the mm. cross too. Mm -hmm. So there, that was a very important time for him. And uh, in a way, I see fasting for us Christians as mm -hmm. well as humbling ourselves in front of God and mm -hmm. uh, just not being busy with food and mm -hmm. what the flesh enjoys so that we can concentrate, as you said, on the spiritual, on the Word of God and communicating. Mm -hmm. So this gives us mm -hmm. much time to uh, concentrate on that and mm -hmm. humble ourselves if there was a, a certain request or mm -hmm. uh, a problem in our lives. And then we can tell him, God, we're serious here. That's right. We're fasting and we're That's praying right. and we, we're giving more time to that. We need to listen to you. We need to, to hear your voice. I agree with you, Samia. Mm -hmm. I think it, there are some very specific things that happen. I mm -hmm. think it helps us to discern mm -hmm and hear the will of God better. Hmm. I think that it disciplines us mm -hmm. for the things of God. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, it helps us to open and recognize mm -hmm. uh, the need for our sin mm -hmm. and our entanglements to be brought before the Lord, confessed. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise, whether it's eating or other forms of entertainment, we're just distracted by those things. Yes. And with fasting and prayer, especially combined, mm -hmm. uh, we really see those things more importantly. And I think there are some very, and, and I'm gonna be a little bold here. Mm -hmm. I think when there are needs in our life mm -hmm. and in our nation and for our people, whoever the people are, mm -hmm. that this fasting and prayer combination is a very important way to connect us with the God who loves mankind mm -hmm. and wants to act powerfully on our behalf. And in this way, I think we are much closer to the Lord and are able to hear Him and invite Him Amen. to have us be involved during these very important times. Amen. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll have you another time on our show. The Bible has been corrupted. Jesus never claimed to be God. Christians worship three gods. Wow. When faced with one of these statements from a Muslim neighbor, where do you find the answer? One God, One Message is your resource for taking on all of the objections that Muslims have with Christianity. Author P.D. Bramson expertly reveals the love of Christ in each and every answer. One God, One Message speaks directly to Muslims and is a wonderful tool for evangelism. Get your copy of 
One God, One Message. Call us at 832-220-4040. 832-220-4040. To order online, visit our website, daretolove.tv. daretolove.tv. You're watching Dare to Love, and today we are talking about fasting in Islam. Have you ever wondered what Ramadan is all about? Let's watch this short video, and right afterwards, I will suggest some ways you can connect with your Muslim neighbors on a personal and spiritual level during this time when they are fasting and seeking Allah. The word Ramadan comes from the Arabic noun Ramad, that is the intense heat of rocks. When the Arabs changed the names of the months from their ancient names, they renamed them according to the seasons in which they happened to fall, and Ramadan fell during the hot summer. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic lunar year. That's why it begins almost 11 days earlier each year and takes 33 years to complete the cycle around our calendar. If you were to visit a Muslim country during Ramadan, you will notice the frowned, pale faces of Muslims, it has become a custom for Muslims to prove their fasting to look gloomy, silent, and tired. Life stands still most of the day during this month and resumes in the evening. Ramadan is a busy month for Muslim women as they prepare delectable meals and special desserts. Every evening is a celebration during the 30 days of fasting where families gather to enjoy their first meal of the day before they observe special prayers called tarawiyah in the mosques or at home. At the end of Ramadan, Muslims give their Ramadan alms and celebrate the Eid al-Fitr, or the fast-breaking holiday. Ramadan is also called the month of the Quran, as the first passages of the Quran were given to Muhammad during this month. Most Muslims observe one night of Ramadan as the night of power. According to Surah 97 in the Quran, the night of power is the anniversary of the night when the first verses of the Quran were revealed to Muhammad. It is a magical night for Muslims because the value of prayers performed in it is more than 1,000 months of worshiping. Muslims claim that Allah puts in it power for His servants to come closer to Him. Muslims believe that it is possible to penetrate through the entire heavens and reach the Divine Presence on that night. At one second that no one knows, everything falls in worship. All animals, trees, even buildings bow down in prostration and then rise up to their original positions. And because the night of power can take place in any of the last 10 days of Ramadan, devout Muslims try to spend most of their time in the mosques praying and seeking Allah. We just heard about that very short time, maybe a second, that Muslims believe is the only time when they can be in the presence of the Divine One once a year. That reminds me that as Christ followers, we don't have to wait all year long to be honored with the Lord's presence for one quick second, because the mighty loving creator of the heavens and earth prepared a better way for us to have access to him. We read in the Bible, both in Isaiah and in Matthew, that Jesus' name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Share with your Muslim friend the amazing fact that through Jesus, we can now have a close relationship with our Creator every second of every day of the year. That is one way you can witness to the Muslims you know during Ramadan as they fast and seek to please Allah. Another way is to introduce your Muslim friend to the stories of the prophets according to the Bible. Muslims claim Abraham, Moses, and David as major figures in their religion, yet they know so little about them. The Quran and the traditions contain little information about God's promises to these patriarchs. So find time during the month of Ramadan to sit with your Muslim friends and share with them the stories of these prophets from the Bible. Now, another suggestion is that during this month of heightened devotion and fasting, don't hesitate to direct the conversation with your Muslim friends towards eternal matters. Ask them sincere questions and whether they can truly be assured of salvation. Be ready to lovingly direct them to our Heavenly Father.
The Word of God reminds us in the book of Acts that with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. So, as you remember, the Muslims, you know, pray that they would be dissatisfied with worn out practices that do not change the inner person or give peace with God. Muslims need to know the resurrected Savior who can set them free from useless practices. May we have the courage to proclaim to our Muslim friends, come reconcile with the Lord. About one million Iraqis have fled the ISIS takeover in central Iraq to seek safety in the Kurdistan region of northern Iraq. Though a small number of them are in camps, most live informally in local schools, unfinished buildings, and public parks. We lost everything within an hour. Everything. I used to have a clothing store. Now, I am a refugee. Call of Love partners with a church in northern Iraq to provide shelter and supplies to some of these refugees. For three months, we had no help with food and shelter, only clothing. We are so thankful for the church's help now. Call of Love's founder, Mike, was in northern Iraq to minister to the refugees, as well as to help distribute blankets and rugs provided by the generous donations to Call of Love's Compassion Ministry. The upheaval of lives in Iraq is tragic, but the Lord God is using the situation to draw the refugees to Himself. And amazingly, a people group previously unreached by the gospel, the Kurdish Yazidis, are among those who are giving their lives to Jesus. Help us continue to provide the spiritual and physical help so desperately needed in northern Iraq. Your tax-deductible gifts to our Compassion Ministry do make a difference in the lives of refugees. Call today, 832-220-4040, or visit our website, calloflove.org. Learn more about our ministry on our website, daretolove.tv. You'll find a number of helpful, free resources, including online books and articles, as well as our radio and television programs. Our Compassion and Relief Ministry reaches both Muslims and former Muslims with the love of Christ in Muslim-majority countries. Watch some of their testimonies and be encouraged by the Lord. And check out our online store with all of the tools you need to get started reaching out to Muslims in your neighborhood, including our own publications, The Simple Truth and Dare to Explore, both written by Samya Johnson. Get involved, become a ministry partner, or host a seminar at your church. And feel free to contact us with your comments and questions. We'd love to hear from you. It's all on our website, daretolove.tv. Dare to Love. Dot TV. I always enjoy this segment of our time where I get the opportunity to answer some of the questions we receive from you. The first question says, I'm visiting an Islamic country for several weeks to teach a course at a university. What is your advice with respect to clothing for me as a woman? This question reminds me of the verses the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the church in Corinth. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God, even as I try to please everyone in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. And that is exactly what you are doing as you try to wear clothes that would not offend Muslims. I suggest long sleeves, long pants, and skirts that would reach the ankles. Avoid tight clothes that reveal the shape of the body. I would also avoid strong colors like red, which attract men's attention. Keep your appearance simple. And when you arrive there, you will also find out what is culturally acceptable and whether women around you wear short sleeves or jeans. May you be a blessing to many and a witness during this trip. Here's another question which comes from many viewers and people I meet. We hear Muslims claim to be the sons of Ishmael or Ismail in Arabic, Abraham's son. Is this historically true? 
many historians and archaeologists have spent years searching to find the answer. We hear contradicting reports, but according to the Bible, in particular Genesis 17, God promised Abraham this, And as for Ishmael, I have heard you, I will surely bless him, I will make him fruitful, and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of twelve rulers, and I will make him into a great nation. This did indeed happen. We read in Genesis 25 the names of Ishmael's 12 sons who eventually took wives, had children, and through these children, tribes were formed. These tribes made up the nations that dwelt from Havilah, or today's north part of Yemen, to Shur, currently the Sinai Desert, and from Egypt to Assyria, which is today's Iraq. Some historians say that all these tribes of Ishmael disappeared 1100 years before Islam and that the descendants of Ishmael were not the only tribes who occupied the Arabian desert. Others, especially Muslims, argue that at least part of the first Muslims, including Muhammad's tribe, descended from Ishmael. So for us Christ followers, let us not make this subject a point of argument with our Muslim friends. We care about their future and eternal salvation rather than their past and old ancestors. Let us stay focused on what matters most. We will answer more of your questions next time we meet. Meanwhile, let's not forget to pray for the Muslims we know, especially as they observe their month of fasting. If you would like to watch this episode again or share it with your church, send us an email requesting the Ramadan episode and we will send you a DVD copy for any amount God prompts you to give to this ministry. We thank our partners and those who pray daily for us as we carry the message of the gospel to the Muslim people whom we love and pray for. Goodbye for now and until we meet again, I dare you to love your Muslim neighbors. Thank you for watching Dare to Love. In learning about true Islam, we can protect our children from the westernized version of Islam and with Christ's help, boldly witness to our Muslim neighbors. If you've been blessed by what you've heard today, we would like to give you the opportunity to partner with us. Call the number on your screen right now or visit our website. Dare to Love is a production of Call of Love Ministries, a Christian nonprofit organization. All contributions are tax deductible. Donate online at calloflove.org. That's calloflove.org. Or call us at 832-220-4040. That's 832-220-4040. You can also send a check to Post Office Box 498698, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45249, USA. Together, we can make an impact in God's kingdom. Meet us here next week as we continue to unveil what Islam teaches its followers, how Muslims practice their faith, and what we as Christians should know as we try to witness to our Muslim neighbors. Dare to Love is made possible by the friends and partners of Call of Love Ministries.